Hello. Uh, greetings from Ormoc City, the Philippines, a city of beautiful people. Anyway, uh, I have watched some other YouTube videos and uh, I thought it might be helpful sharing my experience and where I was last year. Uh, I was uh, 59 and disabled uh, on, this, uh, on chronic pain meds and uh, spending most of my time on the couch inside and uh, last year I was on the backside of 59 and I decided, you know, I, I'm in a rut. Uh, I really wasn't doing a whole lot socially. Uh, I was uh, I don't know I was <clears throat> I would go places and it was like nobody would talk to me I, I would try to strike conversations up with people and people just didn't seem very interested in having anything to do with me it was like I really didn't understand it uh, and uh, it kind of play with my head. I was, you know, thought I was a decent person and, you know, it was like, but if you're a single guy and you're 45 or older, unless you look like Brad Pitt or have money like Donald Trump, you don't have much, uh, not much for people to notice. And uh, anyway, I, uh, I decided, I started watching some YouTube videos about the Philippines and, and, and I said, you know, that would be a, a, a very interesting adventure for me. And uh, so I applied and got my passport and when I came back, I did some research and uh, I went ahead and applied for a one year multi-entry uh, visa you know, with the Philippine Embassy in the US after I got my passport it wasn't that expensive uh, and uh, I came back in a few days and uh, so I went ahead and bought my airline ticket and uh, I was I grew up in, in, in a city but most of my life uh, since I graduated from college I had uh, lived in a small town, uh, lived in small towns, rural areas, and uh, it was like, I really wasn't crazy about going to the big city. And, uh, but anyway, I bought, uh, I thought I'd start out in Cebu because there are a lot of places in the Visayas that are Pretty fun places, uh, a lot of tourist uh, kind of places, pretty beaches, waterfalls, uh, snorkeling, scuba diving. And uh, so uh, I, I decided I would fly to Cebu and Ben, I had never flown anywhere except maybe in the Caribbean. Uh, that's the only place I've been outside of the US. And so I was a little, hesitant taking a trip halfway around the world, but I said, you know, what the heck, I'm gonna do it. So, so that's what I, uh, so I wound up, uh, one of the reasons I got that uh, multi-entry visa was because I could stay up to 59 days instead of staying for 30 days. I figured if I was going halfway around the world, I might as well stay eight weeks, so, uh, I was here the first time about, it was 58 days, so, uh, so I went ahead and, and booked the airfare, and uh, then I went on Filipino Cupid, and I went on uh, Data in Asia, and, uh, uh, you know, chatted up some girls who's photos, you know, were striking, and uh, I mean, there are a lot of beautiful women here, let me tell you. Uh, <clears throat> the 
one of the criteria that I did in date in Asia was if, if they started asking for money or starting a money problem, that's an indirect way of asking for money, uh, that's time to block them and move on to another one. And don't worry about hurting anybody, anyone's feelings. It, you know, when you're, when you're just video, when you're just chatting with somebody, so what? You know, it could be a big fat guy who's smoking a cigar who posted pictures of girls. And uh, so that's kind of how I looked at it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of these girls are scammers. They're very manipulative. And, you know, if they start asking for money, now nah, move on to the next one. Uh, some of the criteria that I did I used in Dayton Asia was I, I, wanted some, I wanted a woman that was... Single, no kids, never been married. Uh, let's see, what else was it? Uh, also wanted college education. Uh, I wanted uh, wanted her growing up with both. Us. Wanted to have her to have faith, faith in God, and uh, you know. So you know you chat and you know and I didn't I didn't I didn't do any video chatting. Uh, I uh, I just texted and I sent some photos and uh, that was you know as I met girls I would swap some photos and share some things about my wife and they would share things about their wives and you know if it felt like something matched up and it was great. There were, I don't know, maybe a handful of girls that, uh, that I thought might have possibilities, uh, but there was one that stuck out. And uh, anyway, I married her last week. So anyway, that was good for me. I don't know so much about her, but I'm happy. Uh, but... Uh, <clears throat> I came over in uh, around Jan. It was around the middle of January, and as it turned out, that same weekend I came, uh, they were having Cenobog Festival, which is a big festival where they celebrate Magellan bringing Christianity to the Philippines. So, um, so anyway, uh, so I planned to be, you know, was going to be in Cebu. I had absolutely no plans. I had no itinerary uh, except for uh, I rented a condo in, in Cebu for I think 10 days and that was get over jet lag, kind of acclimate to the area and stuff. And uh, we're getting back to the, uh, the, the online dating thing. We, uh, I, uh, it was kind of an interesting experience. It's, uh, it, I found it very flattering going from an invisible person in the U.S. to having a lot of women having a, being interested in me, and uh, so uh, you know, it, it was it was it was definitely an ego boost uh, have, having the uh, having the attention. So I. Uh, so anyway, there was there were several girls I was I was texting and uh, but there was one in particular, the one I married. <laughs> I said, you know, uh, she had uh, sent me a surgery report where she had had she had had some uh, endometriosis and uh, you know she had had surgery done previous pre the previous year and. Uh, it was like, you know, she didn't have to send that to me. And uh, I, I don't know, I found that, uh, I was really impressed by that. And, and everything, all of our communication, which is very straight up, and you could tell, you could tell she was sincere and uh, she had herself. And so, so anyway, uh, she was the first person I wanted to meet when I got off the plane, and she had just uh, decided not to renew her contract working as a public health nurse. And uh, so January 1, she 
did not have a job. She had intended to take a job working in Germany, uh, uh, doing something as a nurse, I guess. Uh, but she was in the process of going through that. And I, before I flew over, I said, well, if you're not working, you know, maybe you would consider doing some traveling with me. And uh, that's what we did for six weeks. Uh, I met her in Cebu, and she was with her mother, and some aunts were there for uh, Cinelog Festival, and her, her sister from Canada, her, her twin sons, who were about five years old, and they were, in fact, they were flying out that evening. I met her sister, I was coming in, they were on the way out. And, uh, I saw her, uh, Anna again a couple of times over the weekend, and I said, "Well, would you, would you like to travel with me?" You know, I mean, if, you know, if you're not interested, that's fine. You know, best of luck to you. No hard feelings. And she said, "I'll go with you." And uh, so we spent eight weeks, no, six weeks traveling, and uh, and and it was really fantastic because the people. The signs are in English, a lot of the documents are in English. Uh, you go in a mall, most everything's in English, but uh, as far as people speaking, speaking English, uh, it's, I was having a hard time understanding some of the English people were saying. And so uh, actually having her along made the trip so, so nice and we were, you know, to, we kind of made a bucket list of where I wanted to go, and uh, went to Mole Bowl, Aslav, Dumaguete, Sikihor, Behold, Alona Beach, flew over to Boracay, and uh, then from Boracay flew back to Cebu, and then we took the ferry to Ormoc, and uh, spent two weeks with our family, and uh, had a great time, so uh, after after I flew back, I, I wanted to to return, and uh, we kept in touch, and and you know just you know really missed her. You know, she uh, we had we had such a good good time together, and we she's so sweet. It's just you know. Wonderful for me, and uh, so I. Uh, anyway, I had some, was having some health issues. I decided I was going to quit taking the methadone, so I went through uh, opiate withdrawal. I was on that stuff for 16 years, and so I was dealing with opiate withdrawal by myself, along with jet lag from flying back. I, I stopped the methadone in like a couple of days after I got off the plane uh, back in the States, and so uh, I was dealing with that, and I um, went and had my hearing tested, and they said, your hearing's... We, it was already bad. They said, uh, it's time for a cochlear implant, so... I saw the surgeon, he said, yeah, you need a cochlear implant. Scheduled the surgery uh, for August, and uh, anyway, I was looking at my schedule, and I had about a five-week period where I didn't have anything going on. I said, you know, I think I'll buy a plane ticket and go back to the Philippines. I've already got my visa and everything, and uh, so I flew back in June and uh, supposed to have surgery in August and about I don't know second or third week here I got a, a denial letter from my uh, insurance company saying that I did not qualify for a cochlear implant so uh, my surgeon said he would file an appeal and, and I was like well if I don't have surgery coming up I might as well stay here I'm having a good time. I'm with a woman that loves me, treats me very well. And so that five-week planned trip with a very light bag, I've been here six months now. So uh, it's uh, been kind of interesting. Uh, 
there are a lot of differences be between here and the U.S., but uh, there's a lot about staying here, the dynamics uh, remind me of how it was back in like the 60s and 70s. Uh, people were addicted to their smartphones here too. Uh, that's kind of one thing on the downside. Uh, some people were, they can't get their nose out of it. It's like they're praying to them. But uh, I think that's everywhere now. But I uh, got married last week and uh, things are great. Uh, we're in the process, I'm in, we're in the process of getting our marriage contract and uh, as soon as that comes in, we'll be doing the visa process and stuff. Uh, we didn't get to take a wedding trip, uh, partly because she had to sign up for classes. She's in a midwife program. She decided she wanted to do something different. And I said, well, that sounds good to me. I'm, I'm better themselves, I'm all for it. So. So she's, uh, she's already an RN, and the midwife program, there's a lot of parallel stuff, so she does, she's exempted from most of her classes. So uh, it's mo gonna be mostly, uh, you know, clinical, where she'll be working in the birthing, birthing centers and the um, hospitals. And, uh, um, most, of, most of all the uh, prerequisite class she already has. Uh, uh, so anyway, I've uh, been staying at her uh, staying at her mother and father's house. Uh, she's never lived on her own. She's uh, 31, and uh, I'll be 61 in January. So anyway, what what the difference a year makes? Uh, I hope you find this interesting. And uh, have any questions? I'll try to answer them best I can. But there's. Uh, Looking back at, at things, it's uh, kind of surprising how different my life is. And uh, it's because I decided to get out of that, break out of that rut. So, hope, hope this is helpful to you.